Hello, beloveds. Welcome to the Amanda Collins podcast. It's my honor to help you awaken to joy, be your greatest self, and live a life you love. I'm Amanda Collins. Each week, I'll share tips, practices, and rituals to help you feel the storehouse of joy inside. I'll answer your questions and talk with thought leaders from around the world about health, wealth, love, conscious living, and parenting. Are you ready to live your most fulfilled life? Welcome to the Awaken series. Today, we're so honored to have Lara Eisenberg here with us, and we're talking about awakening to pleasure. Lara is a licensed professional clinical counselor, embodiment coach, somatic experiencing practitioner, yoga therapist, mindfulness instructor, and trauma touch therapist. She holds a dual master's in psychological counseling from Columbia University. She has an extensive experience and education in stress management, trauma, addiction, anxiety, embodiment, sexual health, and awakening the feminine. Over the past 17 years, Lara has worked as a bilingual counselor, holistic wellness professional, educator, consultant, coach, and yoga and meditation instructor. Lara's mission is to assist females in restoring the natural harmony that exists between mind, body, and spirit, and to deepen their connection to the language of the body, sensation, desires, needs, intuition, and emotions. She truly believes in the integral part of the healing for women is to explore their emotional, psychological, spiritual, and sexual lives. And an absence of any of these aspects of self can impede to a life filled with pleasure, power, and purpose. In her personal life, Ms. Eisenberg uses her intense passion for dance as a beautiful form of the feminine expression. We are so honored to have you here today, Lara. Thank you for being here. Thank you so much for inviting me. It's true honor and pleasure. Mm, I, Lara and I have been dear sisters for many, many years. And um, it's just like pleasure, Lara. It's just like uh, the beautiful combo. Mm-hmm. And Lara, I would love to just start off with, would you like to tell us your story? I mean, how did you get to be a somatic therapist, a mindful instructor and coach? Tell us a story. Yeah, so it started, let's see, I grew up in in New York, so I'm from the East Coast and grew up in a pretty pretty violent community. Um, And not just in my home, so my home, there was violence in my home, but there was also violence in the community. And there was also a lot of objectification, just the, the sort of dominant culture where I grew up, there was a lot of object, objectification and, and misogyny, both in my home and outside. And so pleasure, <laughs> it was like the antithesis mm-hmm. of pleasure. Um, you know, I, my mom was a victim of, of the family circumstances and I really learned to sort of devalue myself as a woman, a woman mm-hmm. and lost my voice, um, disconnected from my heart and that sort of soul nourishing vision that we have when we're young of the innocence and Mm. what we see. So I, I, I really, I mean, as a woman, I seeked, I seeked, I sought approval and love, but through the perfection of my body or my beauty. So I wanted to feel valued and loved and worthy and thought that was sort of the pathway and the way to get my, my needs met. And I ended up developing um, an eating disorder, a sugar addiction, and um, just sort of to cope with the vicissitudes of life and pain um, when outside. You know, when you think about pleasure, it's like if you're not experiencing enough pleasure, you're going to use drugs, food, alcohol, gambling. You're going to go outside because the body needs those chemicals in order to feel a sense of well being for your health, you know, physically, spiritually, emotionally. Um, so I was basically just, I grew up distracting myself and numbing myself and I was pretty shut down. And I think the the most important piece was just a a completely disconnected with the feminine. And to me, that's all about embodiment and pleasure. So, um, luckily I was always searching, always curious, just wanting to evolve. That was sort of like in my imprinted in me, I just wanted to evolve and grow. And I had ended up 
I think I was like 19 or something, finding yoga and meditation and Buddhist, Buddhism, but Buddhist philosophy more, sort of like a, the philosophy of life. Um, and I really just immersed myself in that. And then I started experiencing pleasure through my body in a different way. And I started really, because of the philosophy of yoga and because of the philosophy of like Buddhist practices, I started experiencing the pleasure of um, just who I am or, you know, walking down the street and, and smiling at someone because my heart was more open and I mm. feel, the fl- I mean, now I know what the flooding of chemicals is that happens when you smile at someone, you know, the, the just the serotonin and dopamine just from smiling. But <clears throat> at that point, I just said, that's pleasurable. That, that feels good. Mm. When I'm generous and loving, like, that feels good. I wasn't exposed to that growing up. So I didn't comprehend or understand that way of being and that that could produce uh, you know, chemicals and a way, improve the quality of my life. It just leads more of a pleasurable life. So I, I really wanted to know myself from the inside out because all of my knowledge and sense of self was from the outside in on my, you know, trying to be beautiful or perfect or good or nice. And so I, um, I just kept following that path. And then I ended up also finding 12 step for the sugar addiction and just some of the codependent from growing up with alcoholism in the family. Um, I needed Al-Anon. And so that was also another like deep spiritual dive um, into the essence of who I am and also into a path of service and to a path of love really. So I ultimately just wanted to, I didn't want to be a spectator of my experience. I wanted to live my experience, the experience of life embodied. Um, And all of those practices that I sort of just named. um, And then later on, (laughs) which I'll probably share later, but I did, I did a lot more that focused on sensuality and sexuality with pleasure, but I don't feel that pleasure is just that I'll go into that later. That pleasure encompasses so much it's just sensuality and sexuality has been a path to embodiment for me to connect with the feminine mm-hmm. and to connect with um, just the, the, the way that I, or that all women are sexualized and objectified. It was a way to connect back with the kind of the erotic creature and recl- it was reclaiming. It was, that, it was a journey of reclamation mm-hmm. of my sexuality because I feel like that's what's taken from us in this culture today. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like re-remembering, reawakening, rediscovering, you know. Yes, yes, mm. yes, yes. And mm-hmm. obviously the trauma was because I had been through a lot of trauma. And I, when there's trauma, there's that body-mind spirit split, but especially body-mind. And I was like, no, I need to come back home. Yeah. I need to come back home. And you just dived right in, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> that's what I do. <laughs> I know. And that's why you are so gifted, uh, you know, at this work. So oh, well, you were kind of saying, okay, pleasure is this, uh, pleasure is that. But w- what what is pleasure to you? Like, I mean, I feel like we all have our own expression of that, what that is. So what does pleasure mean to you? What is your journey with pleasure been? So I just feel, you know, I was like, like in the dictionary, it's just like making joy or feeling good and happiness a priority. And that's like a pretty good description of what I feel it is. It's like making joy, feeling good and happiness a priority, mm. um, enjoying and satis- satis- satisfying, getting satisfaction from something that, that a person likes. So for example, I think pleasure has been associated with sexuality and sensuality. And I don't, yes, there's a lot of pleasure that can be derived from, from, connecting with your sensuality sexuality but I think pleasure encompasses so 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 much um and so like my journey obviously like growing up I found it through whether maybe it would be men or or sugar or marijuana or you know when I was younger and and it's because I wasn't I didn't know and I didn't know how to kind of find pleasurable experiences myself because I didn't, it wasn't, I wasn't exposed to them Mm -hmm. except for maybe high risk behaviors. Right. So, um, I, I, I ended up, I guess the first experience of pleasure in my journey was music and dance. I remember just going, I'm from New York, but I lived outside the city, but I remember feeling like I need to dance. I need to listen to music. And I would go almost every week into the city because what it was, it was basically just, it was releasing those natural chemicals, those neurotransmitters that were 
responsible for feeling a sense of well-being, you know, about music and dance. And so that was pleasurable. And then again, later on, when I had found those like yoga and the Buddhism, I, I, I was able to be embodied and connect with the world around me. So then I would smile at a stranger and I would want to do service work and I would spend time in nature or connect with my breath or my body. And then there was so much pleasure, mm -hmm. so I was finding pleasure from other sources, not from maybe sugar or not from attention from others or validation for yeah, others yeah. more, you know, is that internal. Um, and then the last thing, <laughs> this one I smiled because then I actually went to a school um, for sensuality, which was Mama Gina school of womanly arts mm. where I actively explored my sensuality and better understood my body and the capacity for pleasure. And, and because there were women, it just felt so safe. Um, and then during that time, I also explored my sexuality with a, with a partner that I had. Um, so I really awakened my sensuality and my sexuality. And so my, and felt the support. So the experience of pleasure, it, it was like a whole other level. Um, exactly. And so that was incredible experience. And then also just celebrating the wins of other women. That's not done as much in this culture. I think there's a sense of competition, so being in a room of 500 women or whatever class it was, maybe a hundred women, there was this, this, we would celebrate one another, which would also create just pleasurable experiences. So beautiful, you know, and that's really what it's about, just lifting each other up and supporting each other. And, you know, what I'm really hearing from you is like pleasure can be just anything that you do it's like I mean yes it can be sensuality and sexuality but it could be like okay I, I'm making dinner and I can just like chop the vegetables and just throw it in the pan or I can yeah. just have pleasure and be like oh my goodness look at the color of these vegetables and the smell and you know it's like it's almost like making it a ritual and like and I think it's a conscious choice you know driving along your car are you going to enjoy the pleasure of the beautiful drive are you going to be you know, frustrated and annoyed. So in a way, it's like, it's just like a conscious choice to, yeah. to be in your pleasure. And I, and I think it's when you've worked through all the stuff where that you have to numb and everything. And when you have worked through your stuff, I suppose it gives you space to choose pleasure just within yourself and in, in what you would even just do on a day-to-day -day basis. Would you agree? I would absolutely agree. And I wanted to give like two examples. Um, of specific situations where I, you said choice, right? Like the choosing pleasure, mm. um, which I think is so, so, so true. I, I go to dance festivals and these dance festivals, they, they start at 12 to six in the morning. Now, when I was in my twenties, that was, <laughs> that was easy. It's not as easy anymore. Yeah. It's very, very difficult. But because I know that I am going to experience like so much pleasure when I go, I do whatever I need to do, whether that's like napping from 10 to 1130 or <laughs> engaging with someone. And I continue to go. I mean, I scheduled three more dance festivals and their weekends where I go. Um, Good for I, you. And then you just give Monday off, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes. It's, it's pretty gnarly. Um, and then even this morning, it's like um, you, I, I heard your voice and this was a choice, right? But this is sort of a natural choice. I just stopped to listen to your voice and I just felt joy throughout my whole, I just listened to my vo your voice in my body because your intention and your light and your love and sort of what you embody is so beautiful and pure. And I wanted to take it in. So I stopped and I was listening and I just breathed it in and I just felt, I mean, I literally felt my whole body respond. And so then again, there's that choice of stopping to feel. Mm. Yeah, yeah. And and I just have to you know, right back at you. I was like, oh, oh my goodness, Lara, joy, joy, <laughs> pleasure, you know, just like getting to connect with you. And I mean, to share this powerful topic, like that's just pure pleasure right there for me. Yes, you know? yes, yes. It's so pleasurable and meaningful. Mm. And then, you know, it's like if we choose to be in our pleasure, then and whoever beloveds are listening to us, it's like, our intention is that we're in the vibration of pleasure. So let's just, you know, create that ripple effect. Exactly. And it's so like being, you know, obviously being in the world of trauma, it's so important to have that counter experience to help build those neural pathways to have a different experience and to know, to know a different way of being and feeling in an embodied way, because there's new 
neural pathways or grooves that are being created, you know? So it's like, it's not just like, oh, I'm going to be in my pleasure and not remember everything. It's not like I don't, we, we all don't have experiences that are really difficult, but it's like, how do you balance those? How do you counter those? How do you meet both together? Mm-hmm. Like that tantric experience, yeah. just holding both together. That's beautiful. It's like cellular memory in the body. And mm-hmm. it's the yin, the yang, like one is inside each other, you know, and it's just like that constant movement. So I suppose it, it does, it brings that beautiful balance. So when you say embodiment as the key to a life filled of pleasure, um, what exactly does that mean? Like in a really tangible way? Um, so I guess kind of the example that I just, just gave, I think that there's there's so much rich information and wisdom in the body. There's like, there's so many answers and so much freedom that like when we live in our body and I know in this culture, it could be hard, especially for women because they're objectified so much. And then there's the fun phenomenon of self objectification. So there's this disconnect, but when we can access the body, whether whatever practice we do it through movement, dance, yoga, whatever we do that connects us to our body, we just feel life more deeply. And I think when we feel life more deeply, it just, it enhances the quality of our life, enhances our ability to really experience joy and love and, and all those things that we can experience. And I I think, I think that when we can source our truth and wisdom from the depths of who we are in our body, it just leads more to a pleasurable life. Mm -hmm. And I guess, and I, and I think, um, then pleasure as the key to an body life. I, I, I said that because if, if we can, we can actively, and, and this isn't, this is a discipline. Like, I, I mean, I still have the tendency, I grew up with, you know, just a complete <laughs> pessimist and cynical person. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I, I could see sometimes I can watch my mind to go to the, the victim or to go to, it's an active discipline for me to choose pleasure. And I think for many of us, so it's not like, Oh, this is so easy. It's like, I have a friend that's really sick with cancer and might not, you know, Mm. she's, she's sick and you know, it's scary, things like that. It's like, I have to make a choice to move on the other side to, to sort of stay in a certain consciousness. But when we choose pleasure, what's a pleasurable thought I can have right now? Um, it's, it's supporting our body to live in more harmony and to live in more peace and well being and to support our blood flow. And, again, creating those new grooves in the brain and shifting the neurochemistry. So actively, okay, so I'm having this, this, this thought, I'm, I'm afraid something's going to happen to my friend or I'm afraid something's going to happen to my dog. Or Then it's like, okay, so what can I do? I'm going to go in the sun right now and I'm just going to feel the sun against my skin and I'm going to feel the breeze against my skin and I'm going to smell the flowers and I'm going to just hold on to that experience to help support me to yeah. heal my body to come back to my body to feel the beauty of the sacred temple, but it's using a a pleasurable experience to come back in the body. So we can really feel and be with and integrate and deepen everything we're experiencing. Absolutely. And I'm so sorry to hear about your friend uh, because I, and I've lost a dear friend to cancer a number of years ago and it's just, you know, it's, it's heartbreaking and, and, you know, Oh, thank you. And, you know, you share, about pleasure, but I think part of the pleasure, and we've we've kind of brushed upon this, is okay. So it's allowing ourselves to grieve and to 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 feel sadness or whatever. All those other ranges of emotions that need to come up for other experiences that we're having, and I think it's having space and honoring that. And I think that's where that yin and yang really comes in. But at the same time, not like constantly dwelling in that space, you know. And and maybe yes. for a period, but like. I think it's like that balance, like, okay, I'm really sad and seeing my friend not well right now. And, you know, I, I'm going to be in compassion and love, but I've also got to have self-love and self-worth. So I'm going to go out and I'm going to stand in the sun and feel the sun on my skin. And it's just like, and feel myself up still at the same time. Yeah, exactly. Like, (laughs) so this, I I talked to my friend about this because she's like, you go to bed late. And I, and I I do sometimes, I mean, not super late, but later than I'd like to, like 1130 is very late for me. I mean, when I'm not going to the dance festivals, (laughs) (laughs) but, but it's, you know what I do? I, I, I I love to read. Like I find so much pleasure in reading and I have so much pleasure in, 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 in watching dance videos and listening to music, like finding music that makes me, my body just want to like get up and move. And I, sometimes I want to go sing. dancing with you. 
<laughs> but you probably don't want to stay up late with me doing what I do. No, so. can we can we find a daytime one, please? <laughs> <laughs> but that's what I do. I get stuck up late, at, you know, to like eleven thirty because I love reading and I love watching these dance videos or just finding new music. I find so much pleasure, and so it's just. You know, it is definitely a balance, but it's, 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 it's so important for everyone to see, like, what do I love? What do I like? What makes me come alive? And how can I do that more? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So beautiful. Um, I think you've given some amazing, amazing ones that I was just going to see if you've got any other ones that you'd like to share, but any other examples of like pleasurable activities or exercises that you might like suggest? Yes. Um, so obviously, yeah, I think I mentioned like being in nature, I mentioned music, especially for women, because I've had some women where I'll say, okay, yeah, so select a piece of music that really moves you, that, that you can feel like in the depths of your, of your body, right? Just the, 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 the impulse to just move. I think for women, tapping into their sensuality through movement, and you don't have to know how to dance. It's just you hear the song, you just start to sway your pelvis, move your hips, like and just notice the movement of the body and just feeling it's like that, that erotic creature, right? That's just that part of you that's just, it's, the music is moving you. You're not moving to the music. That is super, super important. And then also just, you know, putting lotion on as you put lotion on, just really feeling the, mm-hmm. your body, but like the beauty of your body. Like I think so many women have, there's so much critiques and I have my own, but then when I, put lotion on and just start to feel the feeling, the sensation of my hands against my skin and also the functionality of, let's say it's my leg, just like, God, I can walk, I can Mm. dance, I can run, I could, all the things that I could do. Thank you so much. It's like looking at it as a, as a, as really as like a temple. Um, but just feeling the pleasure of the hand of the movement. And then also just people like sports. If there's a sport that you love, if there's you know, meditation, if you love yoga, if you love animals, playing with animals, if you love kids, spending more time with kids, um, anything that just makes your, your heart smile, really. Mm, um, I love that. So many amazing points. It's like, you know, and I, I love that. It's like, let's start with yourself, like that, that temple and just like, look at yourself in the mirror and be like, I'm beautiful. You know what I mean? Mm, and yes. the touch and it's like just putting lotion on, you know, getting undressed or dressed, just like, like loving yourself like you would a lover, you know what I mean? So yes. I love that. So uh, why is sexuality and embodiment an important part of pleasure? So <clears throat> it's, so sexuality, it's, it's an inherent part of who we are. So my first, the first 32 years of my life, I think I was pretty shut down sexually because I, my, my father was a sex addict. So I was sort of just kind of shut down. And then through a lot of work that I've done in just trauma work and sexuality, sexual healing, like I really realized that the power and the confidence and, and sense of connection to myself, like sexuality was an important very important, significant part of reclaiming who I am as a woman and as a soul. And um, it's just, it's inherent, an inherent part of who we are. And it's like money, like sex and money. We don't really talk about, they're kind of taboo topics, but we're here because of sex. Like if we didn't, we, we wouldn't exist. If we didn't have sex. Like, why are we not like talking about it, exploring it, educating ourselves? It's not like we're born knowing how to, how to, knowing our pleasure we have to explore it but if we're not supported in exploring it or if there's shame or there's the whole madonna whore complex for women where it's like i want to know my pleasure but if i explored it would i be called the slut it's like um it's hard and for women and i'm literally just talking about health okay we have eight thousand nerve endings in our clitoris there's no other purpose for our clitoris besides pleasure that's it like why would that exist if that I mean, just if you think about it, it's like, what else is there except to support our well-being? Absolutely. And and then there's like so much more, you know, the the labia is like, I mean, in the labia, the inner and outer labia, the G-spot, cervical. I mean, there's orgasm. There's so many ways. And I would say sensuality and sexuality are equally important. Mm. So just like caressing your skin, you know, just having a sensual experience, smelling something. They just invite us into our body and to know and feel what it means to be human. 
Absolutely. Um, and I believe there's like 14, you know, orgasmic, you know, spots on the body, right? Yes. 14, I don't know. Can you name them all? <laughs> I, I can't, but I know like the inner thighs and there's other erogenous zones mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. that we don't explore because, and I'm not, I, I do, I believe that the, the masculine and feminine, we need to, to integrate both, but it has been predominantly masculine values and sex has come to mean in intercourse. Sex is not intercourse. Being sexual does not mean intercourse. And so I think women feel, you know, if there's something wrong with them, if they're not orgasming or climaxing, and it's because it's been more sort of a male defined way of being intimate is having sex. No, <laughs> women, there's a lot more layers. What's happening emotionally, what's happening like psychologically, mm -hmm. what's happening spiritually. And so um, it's just connecting to the erotic creature. And I think it's just been more complex for women because of all the objectification and self-objectification and the inability to actually feel the sensation. So, you know, it, it enhances our wealth, our health and so many levels. I mean, mm -hmm. one of the things I think, I mean, there's so many like chemicals that are released that help us in terms of like lowering our blood pressure and facilitating blood flow and like oxytocin and nitric oxide and nitric oxide i believe it's like the it helps to support the release in other chemicals like dopamine and serotonin and all of these help us to feel good lower our blood pressure and just support us in overall health so it's even just like touching the because people think oh with age we lose our sexuality and it's like no we just, this is what the culture is saying right like yes our sexuality changes for sure it definitely does right our hormones change things change but even just like touching the clitoris just gently right we're going to get a wave of nitric oxide which is going to help support us in our overall health mm -hmm. and um, feeling good and it really is like self-love like loving thy body the soul and just allowing pleasure you know and yes. just you know, allowing yourself to experience that. And um, as you said, this isn't the only form of it, but it's a really, really important form that needs to be honored. Exactly. Especially for women, because there's so much pressure to look and act a certain way to be good and to look good that I think there's so much stress that they experience versus just really dropping into the pleasure and beauty of who they are and who their sisters are. Mm -hmm. So, um, I think it's super, super important for them to experience more pleasure, to know their desires, to know their heart. It's like they're always giving in service of the other and to really stop and say, what's my pleasure? Like, what's my desire? How can I enhance, you know, my quality of life versus giving and serving others? Yeah, it's like knowledge is power, right? <laughs> yes, totally. So can you talk about orgasm, um, you know, pleasure in the female body a little bit more? Yes. So, um, I would say, I mean, I think the first thing with women is that like that sort of phenomenon I was talking to you about self objectification It's hard when you're like a spectator of your own body. There's all these images of this unattainable standard of beauty and then we become spectators of our own body. So we're disconnected from our own pleasure inside. So we have to get out of our head. And like I said, there's 8,000 nerve endings and it's <laughs> all devoted to pleasure. So it's a way to really, to feel joy and pleasure. And our, you know, our brains <clears throat> need all these chemicals, you know, dopamine and serotonin and beta endorphins because they're the chemicals that make us feel good. Now, if we're not getting if we're not getting these chemicals on a daily basis, these like pleasure, like say we're mm -hmm. always like helping others and always thinking about what everybody else needs. And a lot of women are raised to be codependent like that. We're going to reach out for this, these chemicals somewhere else. So Absolutely. Yeah. Our, it's like drugs, alcohol, sugar. The, the, we, the, it's important for us to figure out, okay, how can I find my own pleasure um, an orgasm and know my body so that I could help support the release of these chemicals. So it, it helps with like just 
the stresses in life. Absolutely. And I feel like when you have pleasure within your, your physical body, your mind and your soul, it's like you make really good choices. It's like, okay, I'm feeling really amazing. I have pleasure. So I'm going to make really good food choices. You know, I'm going to like really want like that connection, you know, and that just more harmony in your life. So it would be in relationships. And and when you're in your pleasure, you feel more inspired in your career and in your work. And then it's like, that's the creative outlet as well. So then it's like, you know, you start to channel your inner artist. And I just feel like in a way it's, it's freedom and it's permission to, once you kind of have that pleasure inward, you can express that, that inward pleasure in all that you do in the outer world as well. Exactly. Yes. So that's another big part of it is um, when you are happy, like for example, I'm just going to give you a small little example. Um, so if you stimulate, you just stimulate your nipples, right? Just a little bit. It's helping you support the whole endocrine system and blood flow. And then there's also like prolactin, which is a bonding hormone, which usually I think is, it's with breastfeeding. Yeah, and yeah. <laughs> know it well. <laughs> <laughs> but it's also enhanced by sexual activity and then time with our friends. Mm. So it's like, or nipple stimulation. It's like, you know, there's ways to just still uh, produce these, the release of these chemicals. Um, and obviously through orgasm, so through intercourse. <clears throat> but I think also the challenge with women is that I think there's a small percentage, like maybe a quarter, 25% or something that they experience orgasm through intercourse and, you know, and then they feel shame. Oh, I can't, I can't orgasm in that way. And it's like, there's so many other ways to explore through clitoral stimulation and other ways to explore the sexuality to not versus really falling into this male model of, you know, the way the way sexuality is or the way that intercourse should be it's there's so much more there's so many layers and so for women to understand their own pleasure their own body and their own orgasm i mean you can have orgasm but it's like i i know this one woman who i think what is it she just saw like something super beautiful and she's yeah. like orgasm. so it's I know for me too. I I, I can relate absolutely. It's like, oh yeah. my goodness, this is so yeah. amazing. So exactly. <laughs> exactly. So I just think it's important for women to actively explore the, their own relationship with their pleasure and their bodies and their sensuality and their sexuality mm -hmm. to again support their whole the well their well being in general and their body and mm -hmm. their mind and their spirit. Absolutely. And how can pleasure support sisterhood? So, yes. Yeah. So I think this is something I've been thinking about a lot recently um, because I think it's my own journey. It's like when you are like kind of how we spoke in, we spoke just, just, just about the chemicals that are released and feeling good. If you're feeling good about who you are and you're connected to your body, I think there's less of this sense of, and body from the inside out, there's less of a sense of, I see this other woman and she's competition because her body looks like this or her face looks like this, or I want this. There's more of a, that's my sister. Like we're on this journey together and we've experienced the same things in terms of what it's like to be a woman in this culture or actually could be woman anywhere in the world. We've, we're both women. And so when we can see one another as a sister and when we can smile and engage them from the inside out, like I see you, I see who you are mm -hmm. from the inside out. I see your heart. I see your soul beyond what the physical form looks like. I think because a lot of times what we do is we objectify other women. Mm -hmm. You know, I know I've had my journey with that is because I was raised with beauty is most important. And so once you can go past that and you can see that's my sister and you smile and then that release of chemicals, uh, neurochemicals that are released from smiling at somebody, um, at a sister, and then you feel like your heart opens because that's one of us. It's like, it's, it, it's one of, we, we just like whether it's gender, race or social class, when you're connected to someone from a, part, a certain aspect of your identity, there's a deeper connection of who you are. And so it's, and then you want to help and you want to be of service to your sisters. You know, that competition creates that separation, but like when you want to help and be of service, 
that, that makes you feel even more pleasure in your body. So you're smiling at them. You want to help them. You want to support their, their success in the world. I think that's something that you do. That's really good is really just seeing the brilliance in every person, but especially every sister that you have and really supporting that light and that brilliance in them, which mm. again, creates enhances well being for everyone involved. Thank you. And yeah. you know what? I, and I think it's just like, I, I love all that you're saying there and I completely agree. And I just think then you're just like, well, let's just be in pleasure together. Let's just yeah. jump through life in pleasure together, you know? And exactly. And then it's once you give yourself permission, you see it in the world and then, you know, you inspire other, others to step into their pleasure. And like you and I know that if people were in their hearts and they were truly in their pleasure and they've healed, you know, whatever pain bodies, whatever, whatever hurts, I mean, pretty much would have world peace. Oh, yes. They're all the work. It's all trauma. Yeah, mm -hmm. I totally think mm -hmm. it's all. Mm -hmm. Everyone worked on their trauma and found joy and the pleasure in their life. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I am so grateful for all of your just wise and beautiful words and sharings and, and everything. And I would just love to ask, have you um, some words of wisdom that you would like to leave with us today? Yeah, I think, <clears throat> I think to just, always see the the beauty and the wisdom and the sacredness of of your body and your heart to always listen and to allow that to guide you to on your path on your journey to the truth and the full expression of who you are mm. that would be that would be what i would say that's beautiful thank you yeah thank you Thanks, beloveds, for joining us today. Please come over to themandacons.com to continue the conversation and get access to all my podcasts, blogs, and videos. Did you enjoy this podcast? If so, please subscribe to the Amanda Cons podcast on iTunes and leave us a five-star review. Feel free to pass this podcast on to your friends. That helps us get incredible guests to share their secrets for an inspired and joyful life. If you want more great resources, come over to amandacons.com and join my mailing list for all my latest content. Thanks so much for listening. Until next time, I'm sending love and joy your way.